Hi guys, and welcome to the first episode of my Iron Man progression series. Um, so, just a couple things to get out of the way first. Um, briefly, I want to say something to my World of Warcraft subscribers. I used to make World of Warcraft videos, um, but I haven't been playing that game very much now, and I'm a lot more casual these days. So, to all of the people who subscribe to my channel for World of Warcraft content, I just wanted to say thank you for the support that you gave me over that time, and uh, I appreciate all the kind words and everything like that. And moving forward, I'm not planning on making any more World of Warcraft videos, although who's to say? So if you're not interested in this kind of old school RuneScape thing, uh, that's totally cool. I won't be offended if you unsubscribe. I'm expecting that many of you have no idea what this game is, or you actively dislike this game, or things like that. So it's totally cool if you want to dip. Um, like I said, I, I appreciate everything that you guys did, all the support and all of that stuff. Um, and then for everyone else who is not here for my w World of Warcraft stuff, uh, I just want to say welcome. Uh, my name is Nick Knock. Uh, I was a professional World, world of Warcraft gamer, um, and I'm pretty new to old school RuneScape. I have been playing uh, for a couple months now, and uh, I'm not entirely brand new. You know, obviously this account is a thousand total level, so still very early game, but not. Uh, it's not like I just started the account. Right, I, I already have 99 fire making. I'm working on 99 wood cutting right now. Um, a bit of my history with the game. I played when I was a kid, but I never had membership at least for very long, so I don't have much experience with uh, any of the end game stuff. I, I did play Leagues 2 and Leagues 4, um, so I have a little bit of experience doing like uh, a Fire Cape, for example, I've done that in Leagues, um, things like that, but really I'm, I'm pretty brand new when it comes to the, especially the mid and late game of Old School RuneScape. So this series is essentially gonna just be me uh, working my way through this Iron Man, um, learning new stuff, trying new things, having a good time, and hopefully you guys can find it entertaining. Um, I wanted to say a couple of goals right off the bat for this account. Uh, I have no end goal, really. Um, I think the most natural way to end the series would be to max the account. So uh, I plan on making these videos for just as long as I still enjoy making them. Um, I'm not going to promise anything as far as like I will max this account by this time or anything like that. Uh, I'm just going to make these for fun and if people like them that's sweet uh, but no expectations or anything. Um, and like I said I don't have a ton of experience with old school RuneScape or anything so it's not like I can play crazy efficiently. I, w I do enjoy being more competitive in things so I am going to try to do you know I'd like to learn different tick manipulation techniques or like uh, how to solo different bosses or, or things like that. So I would like to do that kind of harder stuff. But uh, like I said, no expectations. I'm pretty new. So um, yeah, the, the natural ending that I could see for the series would be if I just max the account and decide that uh, that's it, then maybe, you know, I could start a different series or something that's like a uh, collection log or pet chasing or whatever it is. Um, but I don't have any hard, when I do this, the series will end. The only thing is if I max, maybe that's a good natural place to end. Um, and the like I said, the other uh, way that the series could end is I just abandon it because I'm not having fun anymore. Um, in both cases, I'll try to you know wrap things up kind of nicely if I realize I'm not having fun anymore. Maybe I'll make one last video and say, hey guys, sorry for uh, dragging you along this whole time, but I'm done or whatever. But uh, but yeah, that, that's kind of the long-term goal for the account is to, to max eventually. And then the one of my short-term goals, obviously I'm working on 99 woodcutting. That'd be sweet to get. Maybe I even get that in this video. Maybe I won't upload until I've, I've done that. But uh, that's one of my really short-term goals. I'm, I'm working on that pretty uh, directly. And then my other kind of short-term goal would be to finally get the Phoenix pet. I've done... 733 winter Todd kills. Several of these have been, sorry for the screen flash by the way, several of these have been uh, solo winter Todd kills, which means that the supply crates that I got at the end were 27 rolls rather than the typical two or three rolls that you get. 
Um, and I could make a video about how to solo Winter Todd eventually. There will probably be some Winter Todd in this video. Um, if anyone's interested in a solo Winter Todd video, let me know and I, I could potentially make that. There are pros and cons to it. The um, pros are like you get supply crates with 27 rolls in them, for example. Uh, you get a lot of fire making experience um, and you uh, don't have to deal with other people, <laughs> which is nice. Um, but some of the cons are like the games are almost an hour long, for example. Um, takes forever to do a solo Winter Todd kill. Um, and, you know, you have to do it alone. And there's uh, it takes more supplies a lot of the time because you're in there for so long. Um, so there, there are pros and cons to it, but if anyone's interested, I can make one of those. The whole reason I brought that up is to say that I do have 70, 733 kills, but the amount of rolls that I've had towards the Phoenix pet are probably at least double that, probably even closer to 1,600, something like that, because, like I said, I've done maybe uh, 5 or 10 solo Winter Todd kills, which means I've done I've had probably 140 to 280 rolls from those solo crates. Um, and then outside of that, in the mass worlds, when you do Winter Todd kills, you get between two and three rolls every time. So it's likely that I've had close to 1,500, 1,600 rolls. So I'm, you know, maybe a third of the way through the grind if I'm on drop rate. Um, and Jagex made a change a while ago so that uh, once you hit 200 million fire making XP, you get a 15 times drop rate on the pet. Um, so in the background while we're going throughout this series and I'm you know showing you different little things that I'm doing I will be playing probably five or six Winter Todd games uh, most days I'm I don't play this game every single day I've got a full-time job and such so it's not like I've got all the time in the world to I'm not a full-time old-school RuneScape player uh, but I am gonna be doing you know just slowly chipping away at that grind in the background and uh, those are the main two short-term-ish goals is to get 99 woodcutting and then also uh, get the phoenix pet. Aside from that, I'm just going to throw in a bunch of clips of like things that I'm doing, uh, maybe add some uh, episode-specific goals, like in this episode maybe the goal is to get 99 woodcutting, that'd be sweet. Um, and then outside of that, yeah, I, I enjoy playing mini games a lot. I like doing Guardians of the Rift, Tithe Farm, uh, what's the Temple Ross? I like doing Temple Ross. Uh, so I'll probably do a bunch of those mini games as well. And then I guess one thing I will clarify is here's my stats. I don't plan on increasing my HP or most of my combat stats aside from strength through barbarian fishing. Uh, I don't plan on increasing this stuff until after I've gotten the Phoenix pet. So there's not going to be any much or any uh, PVM type, you know, training of that stuff until after I get the Phoenix pet because I don't want to have to relearn uh, my approach to Winter Todd. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, Winter Todd does damage based on your max hit, hit points and I'm at a sweet spot right now where I can still use cakes as food and cakes are free for me because I could just steal them from the Ardoin uh, cake stall. And I don't want to have to get into the whole uh, weird shenanigans of well now my HP is 40 and I take 6 damage and I have to you know, fish, whatever, food. It's just way easier if I keep my, my health at 29 and, uh, you know, just do it that way. Um, I'll probably cut to me playing a Winter Todd game so I could talk about, you know, uh, how my approach is for Winter Todd uh, because I think that's a, a natural transition. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys then. All right, so here we are in Winter Todd. Um, I recorded this game and now I'm doing some voiceover over it, so this is not uh, my live commentary or whatever, but basically you want to start right next to the brazier. This is the inventory setup I go for. Um, typically I wouldn't have those two supply crates in my inventory, but I would just have the four cakes, the hammer, the knife, and the tinderbox. And then the two empty slots where the supply crates would be are kind of an upside of having this inventory. It means that you can stay for three or four games before you have to go back and bank. Um, you start right next to the brazier. I like to run to right where I am, this tile that I'm standing on. You'll never get hit by the AoE snowfall if you stand here, um, as long as uh, you're not running around or whatever. Um, but yeah, then I just sit here, chop. You can turn your camera so that you can see the brazier like I'm doing. When you run between the root and the brazier, you can fletch at least one root on your way. 
I've read that you could potentially fletch two on the way to the brazier, but I've never been able to do it, so I just try to do the one. Um, and then, yeah, I stand here and fletch the whole first inventory. Uh, I apologize, there's going to be a decent amount of screen flashing, I think, because every time I get my action interrupted, the screen will flash red. Um, so I can turn that off in the future if that's super annoying, but uh, that's just kind of how it is. Um, so yeah, sit here, fletch the entire inventory. I don't worry too much about my health, because with 29 HP, the max hit that I can take from a Winter Todd a uh, cold seeping into my bones attack is three. So as long as I'm, you know, above like 10, I'm not da in danger at all. So the reason I fletch is because you get 25 points rather than 10 points for everything that you put in the brazier that's fletched. Um, and with my inventory set up, when you light the very first brazier at the start of the game, you get 25 points. And then in this exact inventory setup, an entire inventory will put you at exactly 500 points, which is the uh, the limit that you have to be over before you can get a supply crate. So um, that's with these two extra supply crates. If you don't have those two extra supply crates there, then your, fir your first inventory will put you at 550. Um, and then uh, after I get this third supply crate, you would get 475, do it again, 450, and you've got opportunities throughout the game where uh, you can relight the brazier, fix the brazier, whatever, and that will get you to your remaining 500 points. After I've done that first inventory, I run back to this log, uh, this root, chop a bunch of logs, and then this time uh, I don't fletch them before I put them in the brazier because it's more fire making XP this way. Uh, you're not going to have time to fletch all of them. I do fletch one on the way because it's uh, a free fletch, um, but then outside of that, I mean, I'm running there anyway. But then outside of that, I don't fletch them, I just throw it all in there. You do get less points, so uh, the points directly tie to how many rolls you get in the supply crate. So you do want to maximize as many points as you can, but also the amount of fire making XP you get moves you towards 200 million, which would make your pet uh, chance 15 times. So it's a bit of a balance. If you're going for 99, you probably want to maximize your XP. If you're trying for the pet, you probably want to maximize the amount of rolls that you get on your crates. Um, I'm trying for the pet, but also I think it'd be sweet to have 200 million XP. So I'm just kind of, you know, not not worried too much about playing super, super efficiently. Just kind of doing what's easy and uh, normal for me. So yeah, that's that's basically an entire Winter Todd game. That's how I do them. Oh, I will mention this yellow line in the back. That is... Uh, where you're safe. So if you stand on any of those tiles, you won't take damage. If you stand one tile in front of them, you will take damage from the Winter Todd. That's helpful for solo games. So here's a cool little thing that I learned. I'm not sure where I learned it, but uh, if you have extra Pyromancer pieces, you can come talk to this Ignisia person and uh, they'll let you turn them in for either burnt pages or crates. Um, I did it wrong here. You're supposed to turn in the entire set and then you'll get uh, five rolls for that crate rather than uh, four, because the entire set is technically the head, the chest, the legs, and the feet. So if you turn in one of them piece by piece, you get one roll in that crate, but if you turn in the entire set, which is four pieces, you actually get five rolls. So it's better to, if you have an entire set that you can turn in, it's better to turn it in completely together, because then uh, not only do you get less crates you have to open, it's just one crate, right? but you also get an additional roll. So I did it wrong here. Um, I'll show you a clip after this one where I do it correctly and I talk a little bit more about that. But uh, yeah, so, so that's that. I'm gonna go ahead and open all these crates real quick. And while I'm doing that, I'll tell you about the next guy I'm gonna talk to, whose name is Captain Kalt. Uh, he has an option to check scores. And when you do that, he'll show you the number of times that you've subdued the Winter Todd, as well as your lifetime score and your personal high score. My personal high score is almost 15,000 points. That's because of the solo method that I was doing. Um, you need to get at least 13,500 points to get the maximum number of rolls on a supply crate. Uh, so that's why my score is so high. And then the kills don't directly line up with the number of rolls. So two things to keep in mind when you're looking at that. You can talk to that guy if you're interested. So like I mentioned in the intro, I'm a big fan of the skilling mini games. Um, so I thought it might be fun to show you guys how I play Guardians of the Rift. Uh, 
<laughs> this is not going to be like crazy efficient because um, I'm not too stressed about playing maximally efficient. This is just a really easy, simple way to get through the mini game with decent efficiency, um, but obviously it's not crazy. As you can see, I'm not down in the ag the agility shortcut area, which is better. I just don't have a high enough agility level yet. Pretty sure it takes level 56, and I'm I think I'm around uh, level 50. So I start off at this rock mine until the time sense portal thing at the top there says 105 and then i'm going to move over to the work thing and start uh turning them into the the essence um something else i'll mention this is the third game in a series that i did and you can see i've got three of those uncharged cells in my inventory typically when i start a game you want to have 10 and i'm sure that during the course of this game i'll go and pick up the rest but uh, if you take 10, you're not going to use all 10 during the game, so you're going to have some left over, like here I have 3 left over, and uh, you're, you're going to want to do those so you can contribute to the little shields or make these different uh, guardian dudes or whatever. It's just better to have those. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to keep mining until I get to 105. Uh, you would ideally have more little pieces than I get than I've got here. Um, that's the huge benefit that you get from going down the agility shortcut is down there when you mine the big rocks you get way more pieces for every successful action. Here I only got 88 which is not going to be enough. I'm going to need to mine more during the game which cuts down on my efficiency. So if you were down the agility shortcut which I would recommend if you're ever going to do a lot of Guardians of the Rift I'd recommend you get your agility to 56 before you start your big grind. This is just kind of for fun, and I wanted to hit uh, 54 rune crafting so I could get access to the law uh, altar place. Um, but yeah, you're, I don't have enough. I'm going to need to mine more during the course of the game, which means less time spent rune crafting, which means it's going to be less efficient. I also have these three pouches, the large, medium, and small pouches. They take different rune crafting levels to be able to use them, so I can't use the enormous one yet. And I'm pretty sure that there's a needle that you can get at the end when you're pulling from the reward crates that will let you turn all of your pouches into one giant pouch. Um, but I'm probably quite a ways off from getting that. This portal will spawn if you mine to 105 and then go craft and then immediately go rune craft and come back and drop off a cell, uh, give your shards to the guy, and then deposit your runes. This portal will have spawned like almost immediately. It lines up really, really perfectly. So then you can come in here, mine these. They are turned directly into essence, so you get to skip some crafting, which is nice. Uh, fill up your pouches every time so that you carry as much essence as possible. And then, you know, go take them to an altar. Uh, this is why you need those uh, cells, is because every time you rune craft, it'll charge one of your cells. And then you can go put it on one of the shields or use it to spawn a guardian. I think those are the only two things that you can use the cells for, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah, see, I'm going to deposit my runes real quick. I noticed I only have one left, and I'm going to go pick up some more cells. Uh, I typically wouldn't do that. You would typically, that's time wasted where I could have been crafting more essence or rune crafting, potentially. So, with my current inventory setup, uh, a large pouch holds nine essence, medium holds six, and small holds three which means that nine plus six plus three, I've got 18 that I can store in my pouches. So I could, I've got inventory slots here for 22 plus the 18 that I can store in my pouches. When I go to craft, I'm gonna want 40 shards that I can turn into essence every time. Here you can see, I thought that I had all the requirements to come into this law altar, but I don't. You have to complete the troll stronghold quest. Didn't know that, first time learning that, which sucks. I was too slow to make it to the water altar, so now I'm considerably behind. This is uh, a little inefficient, um, but you know, you live and you learn. I'm, I don't have to try it for the law altar anymore until I go do that quest. And then yeah, uh, basically this is the entire game. You just run around. Anytime I come out of a portal and I see the time since portal up there is over like 80, uh, I'm not going to start crafting any. I'm just going to either mine or wait around for the portal to spawn. Mining is a great thing to do right here because, like I said, I want to have 40 essence before I start crafting. I've only got 11, so after I go into this portal, um, I'm going to have to uh, 
uh, I'm gonna go into this portal, I'm gonna put all the essence in the bags, I'm gonna go craft it, and then when I come back, I don't have enough shards to make an entire inventory's worth of essence again, so I'm gonna have to sit there and mine for a while, which is unfortunate, especially because Jagex uh, fixed, quote unquote, this game so that you stop earning mining experience after you've done a certain amount of actions. I try to go into the death altar here, but I also can't do that. I don't think I have the rune crafting level for it. I don't remember why. I think it's that, but uh, yeah. So after a certain amount of mining that you do in this mini game, you stop getting mining experience. So it's, it feels really bad to sit there with only 11 shards mining at this rock that doesn't give me very many every time. Uh, trying to get up to 40 so that I can make a full inventory. I'm not, uh, yeah, I am actually at that point. So I'm gonna deposit these runes. You'll see what I'm talking about here. I'm gonna start mining this rock and I might get experience. Yeah, I'm still getting experience for now, but eventually those little pickaxes will stop coming up and I will stop getting experience. I'm gonna sit here and mine until I get up to uh, 40. Ideally, I would get 41 so that I, uh, still have one left over after I craft them all. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna mine until I get to 40. I'm gonna go hit the workbench, uh, craft it all into essence. The screen's shaking because the abyss monsters are real dangerous <laughs> or whatever they're trying to get across. I'm at 41, that's perfect. So I'm gonna go fill up my, my large, medium, and small pouches, and then I'm gonna hopefully hit that body altar. That's something I didn't mention at all during this game. I try to prioritize the chaos, uh, the catalytic energy over the elemental energy, because the elemental altars, especially when you're first starting off, are going to be the only ones that you can use. So you're going to build up a lot of elemental points, and then uh, you're going to need to make up for that with uh, catalytic points later. So that's why once you hit a certain level, you should really try to get into as many catalytics as you can, and then if you can't get into catalytic anymore, or if there's only, if there's not a catalytic you can go into, there's only an elemental that you can go into, obviously you would do that. Um, but yeah, it, in my current cycle, I barely made it in time to this portal. I had like 10 seconds to spare or whatever, but ideally uh, I would have been here a little earlier. That's due to the downtime that I've had. And I didn't get to go deposit my runes. You can see I still have 240 air runes in my inventory. Ideally you would deposit those and then come mine this. I get one less essence from this trip because of that. Um, yeah, like I was saying though, here's a really nice thing, I get to go into this nature altar, which is nice as an Iron Man, I can't just buy those. Uh, what I was saying though about the reward points, to pull from the reward uh, rift, I think it's called, you have to have one elemental point and one catalytic point for every time you want to do a pull. Um, and you get those by using the elemental altars or the catalytic altars respectively, so uh, air, Earth, fire, and water are going to be your elemental altars, and then chaos, skull, uh, skull, <laughs> death, uh, blood, mind, body, and I think cosmic are all going to be your catalytic altars. So uh, you need to make sure you can see it's kind of hard to see up there where it says time since portal. Below that, on the left is my elemental points. All the right, on the right is my catalytic points. So I have nine reward pulls right now because I have to have one of each. Um, so if I had 22 catalytic points, I could pull 22 times, but I'm limited by that nine. Um, and then below that is the potential. I'm not entirely sure what that is. I think it's like based on your current rate of rune crafting, uh, you're gonna be, you're likely to end up with that many points after this game. So they think that I'm going to have 24.65 elemental points after this game and 11.59 uh, catalytic, but I'm not entirely sure how that works. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really know what that is. Um, you can see one of my pouches turned black. That's something else I'll mention. Uh, it degraded. You have a certain amount of uses for every pouch. And then after that, you can't, uh, it, it reduces the amount that it can hold. And if you keep using it for too long, then eventually it will completely degrade and disappear. Um, so it's important that when they turn black like this, you either use NPC contact to talk to the mage who's at the uh, abyssal zone, or the uh, abyss, I think it's called. There's a mage that you can NPC contact who will repair them for you. Or if you spend abyssal pearls, you could spend 25, talk to one of these apprentices at the front of Guardians of the Rift. You spend 25 abyssal pearls, 
it'll unlock the ability for them to do NPC contact and talk to that guy, and you pay one pearl for every pouch you want to repair. Uh, the pearls are not, they're pretty rare, so you don't want to be using them willy-nilly, but if you're far off, like I am, from NPC contact, then it's probably worth it at least a couple times to spend one pearl to, to get that. Also, I sat here waiting for that final drop of runecrafting experience before I left. And while we're at it, I decided that uh, I'm going to stop woodcutting for a second and then go get prepared for Temple Ross, and I'll show you guys what it looks like when I play Temple Ross. Alright, and here we are at some Temple Ross. So, uh, I'm on a mass world. I know that there's a way to solo Temple Ross and that there are pros and cons to it, but uh, I haven't learned that yet and I don't know if it's worth doing. I enjoy doing these on mass worlds. Um, I am wearing the full angler's outfit uh, to give me more fishing experience. You get that through doing fishing trawler. And unfortunately, I don't like joining these games unless there's a lot of people on them. So fortunately, I have to wait for a game to end before I can hop on here. This one looks like it's going to be decent. Yeah, I'll hop on this one. I turn off Entity Hider while I'm here so that I can know how many people are joining. You can see it tells you players ready, but I like seeing the big groups of people all run over here to let me know it's time to hop on so um, something I'm missing here I don't have a bucket of water so as soon as we get in here I'm gonna find the bucket which is not there not there not there it's this one I'm gonna grab a bucket I'm gonna use this water pump here to fill it up and then I'm gonna run down here and start fishing so you technically can come here without uh, having any supplies you are gonna need a rope a hammer a harpoon and a bucket of water Technically, you don't need the bucket of water, especially if you're playing on Mass Worlds, but uh, you can grab all of these supplies from those crates on the ship once you've started the minigame. You are going to want them, though, um, because eventually the Temple Ross is going to do different attacks, like uh, they'll do a big wave attack. I'll put it on game so that you can only see those. Um, these guys will say stuff randomly. You don't have to pay too much attention to them. Uh, when you see this green tile, though, you can also maybe see there's fish jumping out of it. This one has a chance to give you two every time you fish from it rather than the one that you would get from a regular tile, so you always want to be fishing from these. I know that there's weird uh, different strategies you can do for like, I think it's something like fish 12 fish, go cook them, put them in, do a full inventory, you know, things like that. There's a more efficient way to do this, but I just like to play the old school uh, gamer dad way. This is the wave attack I was talking about, by the way. You have to tether yourself to this pole or he'll get rid of a bunch of your supplies and knock you on your butt. Um, it says a colossal wave closes in. These guys will all scream it. Your screen will start to turn blue. It's important that you go do that. And occasionally it'll break that pole, which is why you have the hammer, so you can fix that. Anyway, uh, I like to just do the old school gamer dad way of... Uh, I just do a full inventory of fish, cook them all. Hopefully I can have them all cooked before I get up there and the Temple Ross is ready to go under. Um, these storm clouds will roll in occasionally and set fire to things. That's why you've got this bucket of water. Uh, you can see that guy just put one out. This guy's going to go put one out. He put out another one. Now we're free to walk through. If you get hit by that fire, if you walk through it or the lightning strikes you, uh, it does the same thing. I'm pretty sure it hasn't happened to me in a long time, but I'm pretty sure that it does the same thing that a uh, the colossal wave does which is it gets rid of part of your inventory so it's not like a cheat code to go cook your fish instantly or anything that'd be cool if it like uh did get rid of some of your inventory but it also cooked some of your fish your uh, fishes this is the colossal wave again so i'm going to tether to this pole and wait it keeps me securely upright which is nice and then you click on these crates these ammunition crates to start filling them with these harpoon fish this boss is super weird like it's like this elemental thing that you shoot with fish and some for some reason that hurts it um yeah I, I don't know i don't really get it i guess there's a probably like lore behind it for why this matters but maybe these fish have sharp noses or something and this guy i don't know it's just interesting to me uh 
so yeah, we're gonna come back down here, go to this green one. We're running out of energy, which means that the Temple Ross is about to uh, pop down, and you're gonna need to come over to this dock and start hurting him. So once you get to about one energy, I like to run over here. Temple Ross is vulnerable, it says. This pool will eventually turn into a spirit pool that you can harpoon. Oh yeah, I forgot that the Temple Ross is like not just an elemental, it's some kind of like spiritual uh, being, like a some kind of god thing. So then, yeah, I don't know. It's just interesting that you shoot fish at it and it <laughs> supposedly ruins its energy and then you stab it with a harpoon in a pool. Maybe you're fishing out these spirit fish and that's what's hurting him? I don't know. Why, why doesn't this have to be a spirit harpoon in that sense? I don't know. It's probably not worth thinking about too much. This is just how I do it. So, uh, you're never going to kill him. At least I've never seen it happen. You're never going to kill him on this first cycle, which is good for us because we're here for uh, the fishing experience. And if we killed him in one cycle, we wouldn't get enough fishing experience. So, now we get to go back to fishing, which is sweet. I'm going to just do the same thing I did last time. If the energy gets too low and I start to get worried, then maybe I will... A green one just spawned. Maybe I will not fish a full inventory, but typically that's what I do. Typically I just do two full inventories, load the cannons as much as I can, call it a day. You do get more experience uh, when you're loading the cannons than you do when you're fishing the fish, so it's worth um, going, even if you don't have a full inventory, it's worth going and putting the fish in the cannons. Rather than waiting for a full inventory, if it's going to cost you uh, you know, every fish that you fish is worth more if you put it in a cannon, is what I'm saying. Hopefully you get what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, so, gonna finish this off real quick, and then we'll go do some reward pulls, probably. Okay, so this is later in that same game, and you can see the energy's getting pretty low. I'm not gonna finish uh, cooking all these fish, so I'm just gonna go right now, leave two uncooked and then go start throw them in, throwing them in because I'm gonna run out of uh, time to do so. In fact, I'm barely gonna get any because we have this 5% and we just got this wave. So now I'm gonna send as many as I can. Looks like two, I get to send two. So I, three actually, so I really uh, was inefficient with that inventory, but so be it. And now we're gonna harpoon him to death and then let's go do some uh, reward pulls. So I'll, I'll just keep recording until we go do that. The essence is running out. Two, one, yay, we win. I've got 14 total kills. Talk to this guy, say leave. Uh, takes you back to Unka. It'll clear all those fish from my inventory. I'm gonna come over here, talk to this spirit angler. I'm gonna do right click, take net. If you want, you can talk to him. You need a net to fish from this reward pool. You can talk to him and he's got some funny dialogue where he's like, you're like, hey, can I borrow a net? And he's like, uh, you know you're supposed to have a net, we've talked about this. And you're like, yeah. And he's like, okay, great. And then he gives you one. But anyway, I think I've got four permits, which means I can fish four times. There's a couple sweet things you can get from this. Let's go take a look. Here we've got mini games. And then, oh, is Tempo Ross not in here? Is Tempo Ross a boss, technically? Yeah. So these are all the things you can get. Tome of Water would be sweet. Uh, it's the exact same as a Tome of Fire, but for water. Um, these are uniques. This fish barrel, I think, lets you hold twice as many uh, harpoon fish. You can get the big harpoon, harpoon fish. This is the pet. This is the uh, recolor of the angler outfit that makes it so that you don't have to take a rope into the minigame. It counts as a rope, so you can just tie yourself to the pole using your spirit angler set. And then let's go ahead and fish and see what we get from these four. So we got some raw tuna, more raw tuna, more raw tuna, and some spirit flakes. So yay, that's that's how it works. Um, I will be doing, you know, just passively, randomly, I'll, I'll stop by and do those when I feel like uh, doing some tempo ross. I just thought I'd show you guys how, how I do it. And while we're on the subject of uh, skilling minigames, I figured I'd show you guys the method that I use for Tithe Farm. So I know that there's a lot of like 24 plant or 25 plant uh, different strategies that people do that are really efficient. 
but I like to just come over here, grab 10,000 of these lowest level seeds because my farming is not high enough. Um, come in here, and I've got a pretty, another not super inefficient, but uh, not crazy efficient method. I just like to do these four big long plots, and I start at this end, zigzag my way up, and then I'll just show you how it works. So basically, uh, also I only have two pieces of graceful so far, but I am wearing them because some run restoration is better than none. Okay, so don't really care about this bucket, never use the fertilizer. Uh, I plant, I water, plant, water, make sure your run is turned on, plant, water, and then yeah, I'm going to do this for this whole section. And then once I've done it for this section, I'm going to hit the uh, uh, watering bucket, even though I still have, I brought two watering cans for this reason, because I'll show you. So I hit all four of these on both sides. And then I completely finish this one watering can, so I run over to the water bucket, fill it up, keep going on this side. And the reason why I bring two is because then you can do this whole side will take up one watering bucket. You run down to the other side, it'll take up the other watering bucket. And then between the two, on your way up to the second section, you can hit this watering thing and fill up both your, your cans. I was calling them buckets, I'm pretty sure, but they're actually watering cans. So, uh, there is some, obviously I'm not like tick perfect here, but the closer to tick perfect you can be, the better. So yeah, I just finished watering all these, run down to this other side, skip the bucket, and then do the same thing essentially. I'll, I'll just show you until I, I finish doing this one. Uh, so yeah, water all these, you can see that I've got I'm running out of charges on my second bucket. Um, not bucket, uh, watering can. And then, now that we're finished, I run over here, use the watering can on the water, and you're good to do the whole thing again. So then you just go through, do all of these, uh, harvest them at the end. If you plan on doing another run immediately after, I'm probably only gonna do these 16 plants, but if you're gonna do another one immediately after, then while you're harvesting, you should also be planting. Uh, on this pass through, all I have to do is water every plant, so there's a bit of downtime, which is why people fit in more plants uh, to be more efficient with their downtime. But uh, I'm, I'm not super worried about efficiency. Uh, I enjoy Tide Farm as much as you reasonably can, especially when it's pretty chill like this. It's easy to have a second monitor stream or something up. Um, but yeah, after this next growth cycle, they're all gonna get to the point where I can harvest them. What you do is you'll, instead of uh, watering and moving on, you'll harvest, plant, water, and then move on. So the cycle between that and the next uh, watering cycle, there's gonna be a little extra time because you have to do three actions on the harvest. But yeah, that's basically how I play Tide Farm. And at this point of the video, I thought it was worth mentioning that uh, I understand I don't do everything super efficiently, and I understand that a lot of people, especially Ironmen in Old School RuneScape, like to play efficiently, and also like to share that knowledge with other people. So if you feel like I'm doing something wrong, or you feel like you've got better, easy strategies that you can give me and things like that, I am very open to feedback. Uh, if you're gonna be mean about it, then I probably won't respond and probably won't take your feedback to heart. But if you want to be helpful, that's cool too. Uh, just getting it out there that I'm totally cool with people giving feedback and ways I could do things better and things like that. I realize that I'm not the wealth of all knowledge, some expert old school RuneScape player. And honestly, I think that's a, a huge upside that could come from this series is people teaching me how to play better. So uh, just want to say, please don't be mean about it. And also if you see other people being mean, just ignore them. Don't get into you know fights in the comments or anything like that it's just not worth it uh, people who are mean are going to be mean regardless of what you have to say about it they've just got something in their head that they want to get out so just ignore it um, but yeah just wanted to put that out there
So I'm just on my way to go do a birdhouse run, and I noticed that I'm very close to 30 million XP. So I figured that uh, I would record getting that 30 million XP, because I think that's a sweet little milestone. What's really funny is that uh, I'm only total level 1045, which uh, is very low for anyone who plays RuneScape. This is still a very early game. And uh, I've got almost 30 million XP, but it's split between these two skills almost entirely. I've got almost 17 million in fire making and almost 10 million in woodcutting, which means that really I've got 27 million between these two skills and 3 million across the rest of my skills. So uh, that's why I'm at 30 million. I thought it'd be fun to show you guys me getting that. So here I am. I'm going to get rid of this birdhouse, which puts me over 30 million. Let's go. Woo! All right. With this inventory, we're going to hit 17 million fire making XP. I apologize if you can hear the train in the background, but I live right next to a railroad track. Boom. There we go. 17 million. So that's 8.5% of the way to 200 million. Hopefully it doesn't take that long to get the Phoenix, but you know what they say. I don't know what they say. <laughs> okay, I wanted to correct a mistake that I made earlier. Um, before, when I was trying to count how many rolls that I've had towards the Phoenix pet already, I said that I get on average two to three rolls per crate, but I think that's not actually true. I'm not sure where I heard that or why I thought that. Maybe I heard in a video or Somebody told me that that's what they got, but um, I definitely, with this method at least, don't get uh, two to three rolls. I don't know how I would get three, but I'm usually uh, getting one with occasionally getting two. Um, so I just want to clear that up. I don't have what I thought I had as far as rolls towards the pet go. Um, I have like 750 kills almost, let's just say 750. So if you do on average one roll, then that's 70, 750 rolls plus the 27 rolls that I got from all of my solo kills. And like I said, I've probably done five to 10 of those. So let's just say five and give us a low estimate. If I've done five rolls or five solo games at 27 rolls each, that puts you at 135, right? So 135 plus 750 would put me at like 885 approximately rolls towards the pet. So just want to clear that up. Um, I'm probably about half of what I thought I was as far as rolls towards the pet go. Um, if there is a way, if you are a person out there who does get two to three rolls every game and you're playing on the mass worlds like I am, uh, feel free to leave a comment and let me know how you do it or link a video or something so that I can uh, up my game. But as far as I know, like that last game I didn't get quite two rolls. I was 925 or something. So uh, yeah, but just want to clear that up real quick. All right, today I ended up playing nine games of Winter Todd. Oh, what did I just do? Oh, I took them all out in one grab. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open all these nine and then we'll continue on. Hopefully I get the Phoenix right here, that'd be sweet. We don't have to do this anymore. No, 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 and no. All right, we'll uh, come back with more. Okay, so as it turns out, I just love lying to you guys. I lied again on accident, so uh, I'm on the Supply Crate wiki page, and if you scroll down here to the drop mechanic, so first off I want to say that uh, it's recommended for Ironmen to keep three warm gloves and three Bruma torches, because I guess if you roll a fourth warm glove when you open a Supply, a supply Crate or a Bruma torch, then you'll get a roll for a Magic Seed or a tor Torstol Seeds which is pretty sweet. That's something I didn't know that I'm going to start doing. And if you look down here at the drop mechanic, uh, I could have realized this had I paid more attention when I was rolling, but basically when you get 500 points, you get two rolls. So your two rolls, um, I'm constantly getting two rolls, and sometimes I get three when I break 1,000 points, which is pretty rare. So 
I'm actually closer to what I thought the first time. Uh, probably double, about double what I just said. So probably like 1,500, maybe close to 1,600 rolls um, is where I'm at. I just wanted to clear that up again. According to the wiki, and in my opinion, the wiki is the wealth of all knowledge. Um, according to them, it's two rolls, and then three rolls if you break a thousand. So that's where we're at. All right, so I finished my five Winter Todd kills for today, and I decided I'd go back to AFKing Redwoods. I just wanted to give you guys a quick tip. If you've done the Karend and Kebos uh, achievement, Easy Diary, and you get Rada's Blessing, you can use it and teleport to the Karend Woodland, and this puts you right outside the back of the Woodcutting Guild. So if you're like me and you like to AFK Redwoods after doing Winter Todd, just hit the bank right after, grab your Rada's Blessing, boom, you're already there. Uh, just in case you guys don't know. The Karen and Kebos Easy Achievement Diary, by the way, is very easy. It takes like very few requirements. Um, so even if you're very new in your Iron Man account, uh, I would go at least look at the wiki page and see if you have the stuff necessary to do it, because you probably do. Um, but yeah, just want to get that out of the way as well. And we just recently hit 46, oh dang, we're almost 47 farming, um, which means that we can now enter the Woodcutting Guild, or not the Woodcutting Guild, I've been in there a lot. We can enter the uh, uh, Farming Guild. So I'm running to this Lovakenj minecart network that's just north of the Woodcutting Guild. I knew that it cost some coins, that's why I brought 5,000, but apparently it only takes 20. We're going to ride the number two option, and boom, we're at the Farming Guild. Let's go enter this bad boy. Because hopefully this is going to solve all of my seed issues. Uh, birdhouse runs give you a fair amount of seeds. And what I've been doing to get the 45 farming has been uh, just buying seeds from Olivia in Draenor Village. She trades you like allotment seeds, for example. <laughs> really, I've just been buying um, onion seeds, cabbage seeds, and potato seeds. And that's basically it. I've just been farming on three different patches. And... Uh, made my way up to 45 farming that way. I, actually, once I hit 34, I did some tithe farm, but that's neither here nor there. I'm gonna enter this uh, farming guild. Boom, there we go. And let's actually even go get our very first contract. Do you have any jobs for me? What is it gonna be? Oops, I clicked the wrong thing. Thanks for the information, I say. I'd like a farming contract. I want it to be an easy contract because I'm a bad farmer. Some woad. I have no idea if I can do woad, so I'm going to figure it out, and then uh, this is what we're going to be doing for seeds now. And man, this is a cruel twist of fate that uh, fate has played on me. Um, so I don't have any woad seeds in my bank, but when you look up woad seeds on the wiki, it says that they are obtained by pickpocketing master farmers. What do you know? There's a master farmer in the farming guild, but I can't pickpocket him because... I need a farming level of at least 65. So maybe there's one over here. That would be sweet. Yes, there is. Okay, so we're actually in luck. Uh, I just thought that was really funny. I tried to do it, and I was like, oh, crap. That is very cruel. But I'm going to pickpocket this guy until I get a woad seed. I'm going to plant it in flower patch, and then bada bing, bada boom. We're going to be making our way on this farming contract grind. And just so you're aware, uh, because I took the Lovakenj minecart network to get there, I wanted to take it back to get to the farming guild, and I had no idea which one I was going to. I only brought 20 coins, so I could only try it once. There's two Hosidious, uh, two Hosidious entrances, exits, whatever you want to call them, locations. This is Hosidious South. It puts you right underneath Tithe Farm, so that's pretty interesting. And what you really want is Hosidious West. So if you're trying to get back to the woodcutting guild, Take west, don't take south, and you'll get there. Uh, you won't have to make this run like I did. Um, but Tithe Farm is Hosidia South. That's interesting to know. Aww. All right, so I finished my five Winter Todd kills for today, and I decided I'd go back to AFKing Redwoods. And I just wanted to give you guys a quick tip. If you've done the Karend and Kebos uh, achievement, Easy Diary, 
and you get Rada's Blessing, you can use it and teleport to the Karen Woodland, and this puts you right outside the back of the Woodcutting Guild. So if you're like me and you like to AFK Redwoods after doing Winter Todd, just hit the bank right after, grab your Rada's Blessing, boom, you're already there. Uh, just in case you guys don't know. The Karen and Kebos Easy Achievement Diary, by the way, is very easy. It takes like very few requirements. Um, so even if you're very new in your Iron Man account, uh, I would go at least look at the wiki page and see if you have the stuff necessary to do it, because you probably do. Um, but yeah, just want to get that out of the way as well. And here we are about two weeks, maybe two and a half weeks later. As you can see, I'm quite close to level 99. Uh, so let's go ahead and get it. So I actually got to 12 million XP in woodcutting. Oh, that's pretty unlucky. I've got one more before 99 and the tree died. Let's move to this other tree. Anyway, uh, I got to 12 million XP doing redwoods and then I decided to do the last 1 million, just over 1 million at Teaks to save up some construction materials and to get faster XP gains. And boom, there we go. 99 woodcutting, baby. So that'll probably be the way I end this video. I'm gonna go get the woodcutting cape real quick and then I will do a bit of an outro and I'll see you guys there. So I actually decided that something that might be nice to include this little bit of the video is how many teak logs I got from that. Um, this stack wasn't quite zero when I started but uh, it's probably around 100, 200 teak logs. So in the grind from the last 12 million to 13.03 million XP for teaks, uh, for woodcutting, I got about 9,600, 9,700 uh, teak logs. I'm at exactly 9,900, that's sweet. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna use these for construction probably. I was originally doing redwoods and the plan was to use redwoods for uh, fletching XP, but I looked on the wiki and it said that to go from uh, 92, which is the level you need to start doing redwood shields, in fletching to go from 92 to 99 it takes 60,000 redwood logs and I would not get 60,000 in my grind to 99 woodcutting so I decided to just swap it over to doing teaks for construction ex experience so I'm gonna go ahead and grab 99,000 uh, GP and let's go buy our woodcutting cape so here we are at the woodcutting tutor and uh, I'm gonna talk to him and buy the cape and yes please let me buy it 99,000 coins oops it's not too rich for me so let's try again uh yes i would like to buy it no problem give me the cape let's go there's the cape so i wanted to share a quick little uh story about woodcutting as this is the first time i've ever got 99 woodcutting um when i was a kid i'll go here and go ahead and do the skill cape emote real quick when i was a kid uh, my mom used to take us to the library a lot and at the library this was back in the early 2000s at the library um, there were a, a set of computers that were in the middle that you could uh, basically take your library card to the lady at the desk and say hey I want to play on these computers for um, the next 30 minutes or whatever it is and they would uh, give you like some login information you could go in and it would start a timer and you could go play on the computer and I was a little kid and I would be in the library all the time running around looking at books and things and I always uh, saw that there were these like teenage dudes who would be on the computers playing some video game and I liked video games and I liked to play on the computer but I was rarely on the library computers so I would just go stand behind them and watch them play and one time I was standing behind this guy and he was playing RuneScape and uh, I asked him hey what is that game and because I saw him cutting down some trees, and I was like, hey, I think it'd be cool to be a lumberjack sometime, you know? And uh, I was like, what is that game? He's like, oh, it's it's RuneScape. So I eventually went home and started playing, and uh, the rest is history. So I just thought that'd be a fun little story to share. Uh, this is a pretty uh, meaningful skill cape to me. Definitely woodcutting has been like the number one thing I've liked about old school, old school RuneScape, uh, or RuneScape in general for my entire life, I would say. So pretty sweet, pretty awesome. Um, and then another thing I'll mention is I know that I was kind of hoping to get the Phoenix pet in this video, uh, but I have not been super, super consistent about doing the Winter Todd games. Um, so that'll just be more of a long-term goal. Maybe I'll get it next video, 
but uh, keeping up the woodcutting training has been super easy because I just, you know, have it on the second monitor, click once, and, and let it go. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching this first video. Let me know if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, anything like that in the, the comments down below. If you liked it, feel free to share it with your friends. If you really liked it, subscribe. Uh, stick around because I, I plan on making some more. Um, but like I said, I appreciate it. Uh, so I want you guys to all have a good day and see you later.